Another day, another new whiskey to chat about. And when I say limited edition, I'm not just talking about the whiskey, I'm also talking about how limited the information was about this particular bottling. Which comes as a massive surprise to me. I was confused a little bit, and I will admit sometimes I can be easily confused. But I did some digging for you guys on this one. Let's shed some light on this release, and let's drink some whiskey. Whiskey. I'm the Whiskey Chaser Brian, this is Chrissy's, and this is a brand new limited edition whiskey. Let's roll. Now before we do get started today, let me remind you about my very useful and friendly Facebook group, Whiskey and Whiskey, which I will of course link below. If you want to keep up to date with the latest releases or just general chats about whiskey in the bands, be sure to check out the group. Link below. So it's that time of year where whiskey releases are coming hot, fast and strong, one after another. It's also the time of year that Whiskey Live in Paris is going ahead. And generally speaking, this is when we see a lot of new releases coming to the market. And everyone's kind of gearing up for that. So is it a coincidence then that some of the biggest names in whiskey release some quality stuff around this time? Look, I've generally no idea about that, but uh, I love releases, new releases. So you know what? It's all good to me. Speaking of big names in whiskey, this right here is the latest release from Redbreast Irish Whiskey, released as part of the Iberian series that ties in with the Lost Dow release. This is the limited edition Pedro Jimenez release, PX. So I feel that we need to shed a little bit of light on this one. There's some confusion. Uh, the information I got just confused the life out of me and I've heard so many different theories on what's what. So let me just explain this a little the best I can. Firstly, this is a part of the new Iberian release of which the Red Breast Lust Thou will anchor. So the Lust Thou will be the main release part of the Iberian series. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. I haven't had a chance to get to that whiskey yet on the channel. I will, I promise, I just haven't yet. Please have some patience. Stay, stay with me on this one. I'll get to it, I promise. Now, the Iberian release is said to celebrate Redbreast's long-standing association with the Iberian Peninsula and will be expanded with other casts sourced from Spain and Portugal. So judging by that, one would think that this is now a part of the core range, right? So why then does it say limited edition? You kind of see where I'm going with this, right? So I have reached out to a few friends, namely one who are not disclosed at this particular time and place because I didn't want him or her to be inundated with silly questions as he or she only has time for my silly questions. Anyway, I reached out. I want a confirmation on bottle numbers for the regions, explain what the deal is with the release. Is it a core range or what is it? So basically, here's the info. Sad to say I don't have any confirmation on bottle numbers per release. The Irish market is rumored to get between 1,000 and 2,500 bottles. That's for on-trade and off-trade, with the rest going to the UK and USA markets at some stage before Christmas, more than likely November-ish, early-ish, possibly. Now, this is a core range addition to the already stellar lineup of whiskeys from Redbreast. Now, if you remember my Blue Spot video I did a while back, you would know that it is also core range release, except done in limited quantities every year. Basically, this is the same deal here. We're likely to see ABV changes and bottle numbers fluctuate throughout its lifetime, including different finishes. But from my understanding of this, the PX is here to stay. Does that make sense? You're still with me? Good, because there is a little bit more. What Irish distillers have done here is realistically genius in a way. And stay with me. We know the portfolio of Irish distillers is Jameson, Middleton Very Rare, you have your Power Spot Range, Red Breast Range of Whiskies, you know, you also have Paddy Irish Whiskey and of course Method of Madness. But what I'm about to say mainly pertains to the Spot and Red Breast side of things, and typically, obviously, Red Breast, as this is a Red Breast video. But 
Reverus has typically always been finished in some part Oloroso Sherry, excluding obviously the Reverus 27, which actually was finished in a short time in Oloroso, but mainly finished in port. Um, and you know, that's not talking about the single cast that they've released, but historically that's been the way. And the spot range has had much more diversity when it comes to finishing the whiskey in different fortified wine casks. You have your Marsala, Malaga, Majira, Sherry, Bordeaux, Zinfandel, and that's playing off of the old recipes. So enter the Iberian series for Rebrus. The Iberian Peninsula is basically the majority of Spain, Portugal, Andorra, a small area of Southern France and Gibraltar. You don't need to have a degree in wine production to understand just how many fortified wine types come from Iberia. And what this means is it gives you a ton of different cast types that Rebrus can potentially use in this Iberian series to experiment and release as part of a core range whiskey. So you have your ports, your Malagas, Finos, your Spanish variations, your PXs, Manteados, your Island variations, and you have, of course, your Anchor release, the Lost Out. Not to mention if you wanted to throw added spice into the mix and bring on board, let's say, a cast strength or variations of the any aforementioned. So you get the idea. None of this was confirmed to me, by the way, but I just said, you know, don't need a degree in any of this to see the potential of what this release in this series means to the future direction of Rebrest and the core range releases. It is kind of exciting and it's a genius marketing move from Irish distillers, in fairness. So back to this release, now that that's kind of out of the way, and that's just me thinking outside the box, right? So there's nothing confirmed. This release was announced on the 21st September 21 and already there's a feeding frenzy. Nearly every online shop I've gone to is sold out and I don't believe there's much more coming down the line. I did say this was limited edition, but we have one here to sample. Lucky. This PX is matured in ex-bourbon and Oloroso sherry cast before being finished for 12 to 22 months in Pedro Jimenez hogheads, seasoned at the Paez Labado Cooperage in Jerez, Spain. This is a non-age statement pot still Irish whiskey with an ABV of 46%. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but it is the first PX finished whiskey in the core range. Core range being the operative word there. As a comparison, the Lost Dow version of this has a whiskey aged between nine to 12 years in its DNA and is finished for 12 months in Oloroso cast from Bodegas Las Dao in Jerez, Spain. Now, if you wanna get a little nerdy with me, an interesting side note about the PX Hogshead cast used is they are half the size of the sherry butts, so they're said to intensify the flavor from the cask as a result of the surface area contact with the whiskey. So basically what you're getting here is a PX flavor sherry bomb of Irish whiskey. That is red breast. Now from previous videos on the channel, and you know me by now, when red breast do something, they always, in general, do a really great job. And this whiskey has some hype it needs to live up to. Let's get it in the glass and have a little nose and a little taste. I'm excited. And of course, really quickly, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, share, and join the Whiskey and Whiskey Facebook group to which there is a link below. Thank you. And we pour. All right, one last time for the record, 46% ABV, non-chill filtered, triple distilled, 12 to 24 months in PX Sherry cast from Paez Lovato Cooperage. Didn't get the final numbers on the release, sorry about that, and or if there was coloring being used. This is a non-inch statement that retails in Ireland for around 80 euros, soon to be stateside for about $86-ish, give or take, in November. All right, I've given it a little bit of a chance to uh, breathe and let me nose it. I haven't had this yet, so I have no idea what to expect. Let's see. So, first and foremost, undeniably red breast. You have those red breast spices and, and, and typical flavors that come through in red breast, the majority of their whiskeys coming out from the sherry casks. Now, where this differs, it's lighter if that makes sense. You still have your, your spices, uh, your toasted notes, uh, which is your, your toasted oak, your sherry influence is still there, your sweetness, you know, but what it is, it's very light on the fruit, on the fruit nose, it's, it's approachable. It's not as, I suppose, deep being a word, uh, robust as some of the, 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 the other whiskeys in the range, or especially the Lustau but it's quite approachable. Uh, I would think light. Um, you have that juici juiciness from the Pedro Jimenez that shines through. That's what your, your hit of your, your fruit notes. 
And when I say fruit notes, you do have a little touch of figs and dates and stuff like that, but it's there's like a, ju a juiciness, like a ripeness that's coming through as well with the Pedro Jimenez. And then at the background end, towards the back, you of course have your toasted notes that you would associate with red breast, the sherry notes and all that kind of coming through. What you don't have for a non age statement is a ton of alcohol coming through and rushing the senses. Um, there's a hint of it there, I'm not gonna lie, very subtle in the background. What, st what stands forward is the lightness of the fruity notes and the toasted notes, the toasted oak, the sherry notes, you know, those kind of in lightness, we prevail. Okay, uh, let's have a little sip, give my thoughts, just launch it. And therein lies the difference. Spice forward, absolutely. But the PX is coming through massively on the palate where it wasn't so much on the nose, a little bit, but more so on the palate. So you're getting those deeper, darker kind of, I don't wanna say like, you do have your fruits, your spice and your toasted notes, right? But it's kind of like, you're certainly getting more of the influence of the PX cask those uh, darker notes. Um, not as creamy as you would think, but syrupy, if that makes sense. Surprising, because there is a difference to my nose now, and it, you know, this is, it's still early, but. You know what, let's launch it. Mm. Toasted notes, still that blast from the PX. It's not overdoing it, but it is nice. It is it is balanced very well on the palate. And I like that. The darker notes from the PX Sherry. Blasting through, syrupy kind of mouthfeel, fruity notes, toasted oak, a little bit nutty. I mean, you know, it is complex, actually. If there's a bit happening on the finish then, you know, you're still getting, the palate is nicely coated with the spice. Nicely coated with sweetness. You have your toasted notes, your oak notes on the on the back of the palate, the back of the tongue. Another little drop left, so I'm just gonna go for it. Launch it. Hmm. 46% is a good number for this. A nice little bite. The nose, palate, finish. Nicely blended. I like the toasted, I like the, the, the sweetness and the toasted oak on the end. That I kind of, that's ringing for me. On the nose, it's blended well, as in there's a nice kind of appeal across the whole spectrum. You have your sweet notes, you have your sherry notes, you have your toasted oak notes, with a touch of alcohol, spirity kind of note at the very back and very delicate kind of way. The robustness changes then when you drink it on the palate, you're getting a lot more of the PX coming through. I find personally um, a little bit more on the spicy side than the nose would let it, let it to be and a little bit more on the PX syrupy side of things. And then on the finish, you know, sweet, long and juicy. So here it is. What do I think of that? Personally, I think again, Red Breast have done something magnificent. Uh, the flavors are on point. It's balanced impeccably well of course it's going to be it's different in the sense that what it stands out for me the most is that the px really does shine through on the palate not so much on the nose but then it is quite light on the fruity notes so balancing in with the oloroso uh, or the, the the sherry part yeah it works and it's nice uh 80 euros to try something like this that is limited edition as they say which you know what I said about that in the blue spot, it will be out next year apparently, but in could be slightly different variation of it. I said it before and I'll say it again, when Red Breast do something, they tend to do it right. Yeah. One small little caveat that I would have on this moving forward is the small release that has been for Ireland. I mean, there's lads clamoring to this left, right and center, and there's people trying to grab any bottles they can. I checked four websites yesterday when this went on sale in Ireland. Four websites. 
and within five minutes they were all sold out. I literally had two in one of the baskets on an online shop and when I went to check out and cash out they were gone. My basket had been cleared out. So I obviously wasn't quick enough with the fingers. Funnily enough, don't be nasty. One other side note and one thing I do like to see from Redbreast is them kind of expanding out a little bit more in the core range whereas coming away from such a heavy use of the Alabaster Sherry and going into the PX side of things and leaving that door wide open for possible other cask finishes down the road. I think that's brilliant. I think that's something that I've wanted to see for a long time. I mean, all their whiskeys are fantastic, don't get me wrong, but it's nice to see a little bit of variation in terms of cask makeup. So just a shout out to the lads here in Christie's and many thanks for the dram today. They've provided this, of course, and as always, all thoughts are my own and I'm not influenced by any outside parties. Obviously, I'm just me on my own here. So this is the time of the year for new releases, so keep an eye on the channel because there's a lot more of them coming very soon. Again, I can't say this enough, make sure you're subscribed and on the Facebook page, I'll leave a link below. That's it. I'm done. See you next time. Chase her out. It's launcher.